Dr. Amber, and today we are going to review what the NCLEX expects you to know about UTIs, from classic symptoms to red flags that indicate sepsis and pyelonephritis. So what is a UTI? Acute cystitis, or a urinary tract infection, is bladder inflammation caused by infection, and it is most commonly caused by bacteria like E. coli from the stool. So who's most at risk for a UTI? Well, let's think like the NCLEX. First are factors that introduce bacteria or increase bacterial growth. Next are any factors that cause incomplete bladder emptying and stagnant urine, which bacteria love. So let's take a closer look. First, female sex. Why? Well, a shorter urethra means bacteria have a quick trip to the bladder. Diabetes also increases the risk because bacteria love glucose-rich urine. And sexual activity and poor hygiene also increase the risk of introducing bacteria. And let's not forget about catheters. Indwelling urinary catheters or cystoscopy procedures are basically an express lane for bacteria to enter the bladder. Next is older age, constipation, prostate issues like BPH, kidney stones, and neurogenic bladder. These all decrease bladder emptying and increase the risk of stagnant urine. So let's talk about UTI findings. You know the classic burning urgency and frequency, also known as dysuria. And this is what clients most often report. But we may also see difficulty voiding. Some clients will even have difficulty starting or completing urination due to inflammation. Next is nocturia, or needing to urinate more often at night. And if the urine is cloudy or has a strong odor, this is a red flag for an active infection. And finally, here's your NCLEX curveball. In older adults, the only sign of a UTI might be confusion or a sudden change in mental status. No fever, no burning, just new onset delirium. So if this occurs, always investigate for a UTI. So here's our first NCLEX quick check. So let's pause and see if you can answer these questions. What urinary symptoms typically occur with UTIs? That's burning, frequency, and urgency, also known as dysuria. What may be the only symptom of a UTI in older adults? Mental status changes or acute confusion. So what do we do for clients with a suspected UTI? First, collect a urine sample for urinalysis and culture. The urinalysis analyzes urine for the presence of infection like nitrates and WBCs. The urine culture and sensitivity identify specific organisms and antibiotic sensitivity. But to get accurate results, we must be careful when collecting the urine specimen. Remember, the clean catch urine specimen should be collected in the middle of the urine stream or midstream after the client initiates urination. And here's an important tip you must remember for NCLEX. Always collect cultures before administering antibiotics. Otherwise, the antibiotics will be present in the urine and no bacteria will grow. We should also anticipate antibiotic administration and instruct the client to complete the full course of antibiotics. They should never stop early. And finally, monitor for symptoms of pyelonephritis like flank pain, which indicates the infection is moving to the kidneys. So remember for NCLEX, we must teach clients with UTIs to hydrate to eradicate. They should aim for at least two liters of fluid a day and instruct the client to never hold in the urine, even if it burns. They should urinate often and don't delay to keep the bladder empty and flush out the bacteria. So now let's talk irritants. No alcohol, caffeine, or spicy foods. So tell the client to say goodbye to cocktails, coffee, and curry. And remember, UTIs hurt, so we give finazepyridine, a urinary analgesic, to reduce discomfort. And finally, implement comfort measures like warm sits baths and heating pads to decrease pain. Now it's time for our next NCLEX quick check. So let's pause and answer these questions. When should the container be placed into the urine stream during a clean catch specimen? That's midstream. Should a urine culture be collected before or after antibiotics? Before. How much fluid should a client with a UTI consume daily? At least two liters. And finally, which bladder irritants should clients with UTIs avoid? They should avoid alcohol, caffeine, and spicy foods. So once again, no cocktails, coffee, or curry. 
So once they've started antibiotics, it's important to teach the client how to prevent future UTIs. So first, they should be instructed to always wipe front to back. This keeps bacteria from the stool away from the urethra. Clients should also be instructed to urinate before and after sex to flush out bacteria introduced during intercourse. Also, clients should skip spermicides, douches, and bubble baths. They disrupt the natural flora and promote bacterial growth. And finally, clients should wear loose-fitting cotton underwear instead of synthetic fabrics like polyester or nylon because cotton breathes and decreases the risk of infection. So while we're on prevention, let's talk about reducing the risk of catheter-associated infections because the NCLEX loves to test on these. So rule one, only use a catheter if it is absolutely necessary and we should remove it as soon as possible. The longer it is in, the higher the risk. Rule two, we must prevent backflow of urine into the bladder. So how do we do this? Well, one, we should empty the bag often. Never let the urine collection bag get more than half full. We should also keep the bag below bladder level, always. And we should secure the tubing to the client's leg to make sure it doesn't pull or kink. So now let's move on to our next NCLEX quick check. Let's pause and see if you can answer these questions. What is the correct wiping technique when using the restroom? Clients should always wipe front to back. And what should clients be taught about sexual intercourse to lower the risk of UTI? They should urinate before and after sex. So now let's move on to pyelonephritis. What happens when a UTI doesn't stay in the bladder? Well, it climbs straight up to the kidneys, and this is how pyelonephritis or kidney inflammation occurs. It's usually caused from an ascending UTI. Think of it like bacteria hitching a ride upstream. And once it hits the kidneys, things can get serious quickly. Pyelonephritis increases the risk of hospitalization, acute kidney injury, and even sepsis. So who's most at risk? Think anyone with a urinary obstruction, like pregnancy or kidney stones, or clients with urinary reflux, where bacteria flows back into the kidneys. And finally, bacteria love stagnant urine. So how do we know when a UTI has turned into pyelonephritis? Well, the symptoms go beyond the bladder. Although you'll still see the traditional UTI symptoms like dysuria, we will also typically see systemic findings, such as fever and chills. Also, expect a high WBC count and nausea and vomiting typically occur due to kidney inflammation. And finally, here are big pyelonephritis classic findings, flank pain and CVA tenderness. CVA tenderness is pain near the lower back where the kidneys live. So if you gently tap that area and the client jumps, that is CVA tenderness. Pyelonephritis interventions focus on kidney protection. So we should start by preventing dehydration and encouraging fluid, at least two liters of fluid a day, because hydration keeps the kidneys flushed and reduces the risk of acute kidney injury. And nausea and vomiting can be severe with pyelonephritis. So anticipate antiemetics such as ondansetron for relief. And if the client is too nauseated to drink, anticipate IV fluids and closely monitor kidney function. Watch urine output as well as BUN and creatinine levels. So for NCLEX, remember to prevent dehydration with pyelonephritis because it is the quickest way to acute kidney injury. With pyelonephritis, we must stop the client from turning septic. So how do we do this? Well, first, we should collect blood cultures before antibiotics. Remember, the NCLEX loves to test on this sequence. Cultures first, antibiotics second. So once our blood cultures are collected, it is go time. We should administer antibiotics, and typically IV antibiotics are needed. And finally, always monitor vital signs closely because a drop in blood pressure and an increase in heart rate indicate possible sepsis and require immediate intervention. Finally, when talking about pyelonephritis treatment, remember it isn't just dangerous, it's uncomfortable. So what can we do to help clients feel better? Well, for fever and pain, we should administer NSAIDs and acetaminophen. And for that deep aching flank pain, a heating pad or warm compress can decrease this discomfort. 
Now it's time for our last NCLEX quick check. Let's pause and see if you can answer these questions. Which findings in a client with UTI suggest progression to pyelonephritis? Well, we will see systemic findings like fever and vomiting and those classic signs like flank pain and CVA tenderness. Which two complications should you monitor a client with pyelonephritis for? Acute kidney injury and sepsis. And finally, what is the priority intervention for clients with pyelonephritis? We should encourage fluid intake or IV fluids to prevent an acute kidney injury. So let's end with medications because you will need to know these for NCLEX. So for UTIs, we start with oral antibiotics and there are some specific medication considerations. With trimethoprim sulfamethazole or Bactrim, remember it is contraindicated in clients with sulfa allergies and it increases the risk of Steven Johnson syndrome. So if the client experiences any type of rash, they should immediately stop the medication and contact the healthcare provider. For bladder pain and burning, we can give finazepiridine, a urinary analgesic. And here is the big teaching point. It will turn body fluids a bright orange red color. And this is totally normal, but we must warn clients ahead of time so that they don't panic. Also, remind them that they should switch to glasses instead of contacts to prevent staining contact lenses. And finally, they should use underwear liners to prevent staining clothes. So now you are ready for questions on urinary tract infections when taking the NCLEX.